Good evening YouTube, today we've got an unboxing of the ASUS Transformer Prime. Anyhow, let's get started. Now, this box here is actually the complex box. Okay, so let's get this opened up here. Come on, come out of there. Right. First thing we have here is the tablet itself. Uh, which I will try to show you. So, covered in a plastic wrap type thing, which we will take out. Wow. The first um, thing I notice is this is very light. Okay, and then in here, below the tablet, we have the dock, keyboard with the various uh, hotkeys, mouse, and SD card slot, one full size USB port here, and something or other here, which I am not sure what is. We will have to look into that later. Here we have what I can only assume to be a manual of some kind. Yes. Inspiring innovation, persistent perfection. We shall see about that and more in various other languages. In the box here, we've got a screen wipe to get rid of dust, among other things. Notice I leave among other things open for interpretation. And a USB cable, very similar to the Apple 32 pin connector. And a European charger. I'll be charging this via a um, USB port on my PC anyhow. So I'm not going to need to use the adapter, but um, I'm guessing it's because this is um, not a uh, UK revision that I've got, but um, I'm not entirely certain about that. As for the rest of the box, there is nothing else in there. So we can stick that down there and have it fall down onto something else. This is a something written in German, which I can't read. Anyhow, let's get to the tablet and the dock. All right, we'll get this wrapping off the dock here. Before I go any further here, I should mention this is a 32 gigabyte model, no 3G of course, and it is the uh, Champagne Gold model, which is really more of a silvery color, but I don't know why they call it Champagne Gold. Well, that was my most difficult unboxing ever. So, um, more German here. I'm getting the impression this came from Germany. And we will move on to the tablet itself. And there we have it. Very black, glossy fingerprint magnet. Now let's go and turn this thing on and see if we have any battery power left. Ah, it vibrates. So it does have vibration then. Let's check for backlight bleed here. We have some down here, not particularly severe, but it's there and some down here. The rest is pretty much fine. So on the backlight bleed front, I'd say very reasonable. Um, certainly nothing that I haven't seen on just about every other LED or LCD device in existence. There we are. Interesting, for some reason, the entire OS does appear to be in Cantonese, which is very strange because all the packaging is in German. Um, I don't know what's going on there. I'm going to settings here. About, I think that is. And Android version here is 3.2.1, so we have not yet installed the Honeycomb, sorry, the Ice Cream Sandwich update, which I'm going to do now. I really must say this is absolutely a joy to use. The OSM, you'll find absolutely no lag, no stutter in any of the animations whatsoever. So um, I am very pleased to see that, that quad core, uh, Tegra 3 is certainly doing its job well, I would say. Okay, so here we are, back after two days. Yeah, longer than expected. And um, we've got the tablet running ice cream sandwich. You'll have to excuse Netflix there. Um, so, as you'd expect, it runs pretty darn fast. Um, no lag whatsoever in pretty much anything at all. Very, very responsive. Um, now, in terms of applications, uh, I have not encountered any problems. I've got no force closes, which is a first for me with a, 
an Android device, which is a, a very good in first impression. Um, also, I've, I've tried out the USB port and the SD card slot functionality in this uh, keyboard dock, both of which work extremely well. I can connect my Xbox 360 controllers, I can connect um, USB hard disks, I can connect memory card readers, and uh, so far I've yet to encounter anything which hasn't worked, so um, quite frankly that's rather amazing for me. Now, in terms of uh, quick demos, I will give you um, an example of how it performs. So we'll go and open up an emulator. Let's try... Um, how about N64? N64-oid. And here we should have... Mario Kart 64. We'll go and start a race here. This is going to be awkward. So gameplay, pretty smooth overall. Sound, generally good. Sometimes breaks up a bit depending on the complexity of the particular scene. But um, as you can see, there's um, no um, stutters. Relatively high frame per second. Uh, around 50, maybe 60 right now. It does tend to drop occasionally, but the game overall is uh, very, very playable. I would be rather comfortable playing this with the appropriate controller because the touchscreen controls are rather painful. Anyhow, let's go back to our home screen here, and uh, let's try PlayStation 1. The PS1 emulator, in my experience, is pretty damn near perfect. Not everything runs, not in terms of games, not every single game runs, but... Um, the ones I've tried have only encountered one which has not run, and that was a rather obscure game. So here we have Crash Bandicoot 3. Let's give this a shot. Alright, so gameplay, as you can see there, no problem at all. Sound is generally perfect. Let's go grab the first map here. Of course, you can connect PlayStation 3 controllers via Bluetooth uh, and USB and PlayStation 1 or 2 controllers by a USB adapter. And I've tried both of those, and they work wonderfully. As you can see, gameplay very smooth, no problems at all. Kill the chicken, kill the chicken. Ah. YouTube needs a pain for this. Playing PS1 games with a touchscreen. The ultimate load. Anyway, I hope you can see there's uh, no problem there. So, um, on the emulator front, we are doing well. And that is still running in the background. Let's go close it. Swipe to close operation useful. We've got SNES OID here, F0. Give that a shot. Grand Prix. Yep. Yes, yes. Mute City. I cannot see the controls. Yeah. Well, I cannot handle the controls either, so seeing them is only half the battle, really. But yes, once again, as you would expect, I suppose, no problems at all. F-Zero is the only game I've actually downloaded for this, so no Mario Kart, yes, yet. I probably should have said Mario Kart, but uh, what the hell. Anyway, no problem there at all. Sound is perfect, gameplay is perfectly smooth, etc, etc. Let's head back to our menu, and we'll close that. So, um, browser next, I suppose. Okay, so we're still loading here, but as you can see already, perfectly smooth, no problems at all. Pinch to zoom, no problem there. Oh, come on, my connection can't be that slow. Hurry up. But yep, yeah, no problem at all. Perfectly smooth, wonderful. Let's have a look at uh, something like, go, oh, I don't know. Um, PlayStation scene, I suppose. Yep, and here is PSX scene. We'll just stop that from loading there because I can't wait all day on my crappy connection. Um, but yeah, once again, no stuttering whatsoever wonderfully smooth browser in all respects. Next up, Flash content, which I will try out now. Let's go to Mega Video. Um, yeah, can't go to Mega Video. Thanks a lot, Law. 
Anyhow, let's go grab a video here and watch it. Preferably not a crappy pop song, um, or music video as the case may be. Uh, the textbook reinvented for iPad. Oh, the irony. Let's watch it anyhow. Hmm, I wonder if Apple's going to sue me. I wouldn't put it past them at this point. There you go. Flash video playing, scroll up and down. Totally smooth. No problem at all. The video doesn't even lag. So, yay. Four cores. We can go full screen down here. So, yep, we are now playing uh, Flash content in 720p in full screen mode um, through the web browser. So, um, I think that's rather wonderful, really. And that is pretty much all the main uh, functions here which we have tested. Now, I have not yet run this through benchmarks in something like Quadrant because when it comes to tablets and devices like these, it's more real world performance that I'm interested in. But of course, when it comes to processor intensive tasks, the Prime is no slouch at all. Let's go and uh, try something like Riptide GP. Now, Riptide here is a game uh, optimized for Tegra 3. So, basically console quality graphics on the tablet. I'm rather apprehensive about moving the screen because then I'll lose my focusing on the camera. But um, as you can see, we're getting about 40 to 60 frames per second at maximum graphic settings, which is very impressive, I must say. And of course, we can also output this game to a display via micro HDMI. Not only that, but uh, we can actually output stereoscopic 3D. Okay, so here we go. I'll just turn this on here. And as you can see, we've got perfect screen mirroring here. No loss of speed at all. Still very, very smooth. So if we go to Netflix here, one feature in particular with the um, ice cream sandwich, which I have found extremely useful, is the ability to force 2D acceleration in all applications. So uh, right now, Netflix is a hell of a lot smoother than you'd expect it to be on uh, a tablet. So very, very smooth Netflix application there. Not perfect, but considering that the application does not natively implement 2D acceleration, it is very, very good. And um, of course, we can go and play uh, what can I play that won't get me sued for copyright? Well, nothing really. We're in Netflix. Duh. We'll go and play some uh, Mythbusters and hope that I don't get them. Um, yeah, don't worry. Nothing to use that terrible pun today. So, as you can see, when outputting to the external display, we don't get the um, menu bar at the bottom of the display. We just get the full-size image. Looks quite good. I think the Netflix app on Android and iOS, that matter, will only stream in, I think, 360p, so it's not going to look wonderful, but um, easily watchable by any standard. And that's how Netflix performs. So we can go have a look at a game as well, just to give you an impression of what it's like here. So what we have up here on the top screen is a 3D output of um, GP, which you probably can see there, I think. And we're getting very smooth gameplay, no real stutters or anything I can see here, which is very impressive considering that we're rendering uh, a 720p game out of a tablet in 3D. And that would be your quick demo of screen mirroring. So in terms of availability, you can get this tablet with their 32 gigabytes of storage uh, for about 500 euro without the dock, or 600 euro for 64 gigabytes without the dock. Um, so on the higher end, just a little cheaper than the iPad 2. If you're looking for a version with the dock, you'll add 100 euro to the price. So for 32, you end up with them um, 600 euro, and for 64, you end up with 700 euro. You can also purchase the dock separately, um, which would run you about 150 euro. So it's it's a better deal to get it with it, basically. Having owned several tablets, I would say, in terms of price and performance, this is the best value tablet right now, especially considering the user experience, which is quite simply wonderful. Anyhow, this has been a quick unboxing and review of the Asus Transformer Prime tablet. Um, by the time you watch this video, I'm probably going to be away for the foreseeable future. Um, so you're kind of looking back in time right now. I do have planned some of a uh, footage montage video to make that while I'm away, 
So um, hopefully that goes over well and you enjoy that. So if you have any further questions about this tablet or you would like me to uh, make a quick video demonstrating something in case you are uh, planning to purchase one, do let me know in the comments and I will do my best to oblige. Finally, I hope this video brought you some insight and uh, I shall see you next time. So for now, live long and prosper and El Sai Kungru.